Ikaw ka si Kukun, inyo pack for ice bridges. Marine mammals are nutritionally, spiritually, and culturally integral to many Kotzebue people. The Kotzebue Sikakun team researched seal habitat in many capacities on and above Kotzebue Sound. Good morning, Johnson. This is Ranger Thea from the Northwest Arctic Heritage Center and I have a big crew of researchers with me. One of the really unique things about this project is we had the opportunity to work with the local community at the earliest stages of our research before we even came up with our research questions. And as scientists, that's a pretty rare opportunity to get to do that. Normally we have to come up with our research questions on our own. Is that something that is a topic we should, that we should address. Most of the questions end up something to do with the marine mammals that inhabit the sea ice. The ringed seals, the natchik, and the, the bearded seals, the ubruk, that occupy the sea ice during the winter and the springtime. Out of the six questions created by the team, three of them were specific to marine mammals. The team spent roughly a month each spring of 2018 and 2019 doing research in Cotsview Sound. This included several trips out on the sea ice with local elders and western scientists to look at seal habitat and any evidence of impacts due to warming climate conditions. We're getting ready to head out in a big convoy of snow machines out to uh, an abandoned seal lair that we found out near one of Cyrus's hunting locations near Sosolik. We're going to go out there and take some measurements of the ice and snow and see what kind of ice and snow the, the seals choose to, to build their lairs in. We've got three of our advisory council members, three of the local experts on seals and sea ice here. Bobby, Cyrus and John are going to come out with us. So really looking forward to a good day of learning about ice and snow and seals. I'm saying this is a den uh, that did get uh, caved in with the warmer weather that we've been having here and it appears with that little shelving in there it appears that the the pup might be protected from uh, predators such as a uh, raven what creates these little snow banks is little ice piles in the ideal place for them to uh, be making dens but there's more ice piles within the area where, which they use for breathing holes and possibly dennings like this here Packing the gear and the sleds, going out with John and Cyrus, look at ring seal habitat. You could see that the seal had hauled out, and it was actually, it was actually sort of iced over just slightly because of their warm body melting the snow around it. This particular breathing hole has a bit of a slope to it. You can tell that the seal usually entered from this direction out this way. There's some kind of sloping to the walls, and even just for indicators of melt, there can be interesting pitting on the surface of the ice from below. Our aerial surveys were done by the use of scientific instrumentation called payloads in the head of large fixed-wing drones that flew over areas of Cotsby Sound. The thermal visible payload, which is what we use to survey for seal habitat, we've been targeting three different areas. One of those is just offshore of Sisolik. That's where we did all of our on-ice work this field season. That was the only place that was really safe and accessible for us to go. And we wanted to make sure that we were able to cover that area with the drone as well, so that we're flying over areas that we've confirmed on the ground, have seals and have seal structures, and we can also fly over locations where we've done topography surveys and surveys for snow depth, so we'll have data on what that ice surface is like to pair with our observations of seals from that location. I'll be looking at all the different locations where we saw ring seals on the sea ice in the drone imagery and trying to see whether there's a systematic difference in where we saw seals and where we didn't. So we can look at what habitat features they're selecting for, such as rough pressure ridges or areas with snow drifts that would be deep enough to allow them to construct a lair for having their pups. Our team partners with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Peter Bovang, a NOAA SEAL researcher, was able to join the team on a couple trips to Kotzebue. 
our interest uh, in participating is bearded and ringed seals. The species are not as well documented scientifically as many of the other seal species in the world. They're challenging to study. They're out in the ice, they're hard to get to, it's expensive. We're interested in learning about their vulnerability to changes in a warming Arctic. The Elder Advisory Council members are pivotal to understanding changes in seal habitat. They usually like to go to uh, eye walks or the uh, ice piles, mm -hmm. and um, because ice piles provide shelter and then also they can breathe, you know, and it's uh, safe for them you know, from the predators. So the seal pups can grow and until they get ready, big and old enough to go on their own. But uh, with all this lack of ice, you know. There's, I don't know where they're doing it. I think they found a way. Mm. You know? One of the biggest changes that we notice is that the water is much warmer. And as winters have no ice, the sun warms up the water so much earlier. This will be our fourth year that uh, our ocean has not froze. And the only place that it froze was along the shallow islands that we have near Kotzebue. And it presents a lot of problems for all the animals, including the humans. What happens is that the Seals have to have their young closer to shore because they got no ice to go to except for the landfast ice, which is four or five miles out to eight miles out, and some places only a mile and a half out. And so they have really no places to make their dens now because we don't have any big piles of ice like we used to have. There's no question in my mind whether climate change is real. The big thing that I always think about is sea ice loss. Arctic marine mammals that are ice associated, how that affects the people that rely on those animals and those species as well. Are there changes in their accessibility and their availability? We've had to modify our way of hunting and we've also had to become very, very careful. Last two years I have not hunted in the spring because it's so different that I don't want to lose my life because you, you can't read the ice as well as we used to. The, the way of reading the ice is no longer valid. It, it's changed so much. And our springs and our falls are becoming longer and longer, whereas our winter is shorter and shorter. At one point in time, we used to have nine months of winter. Now we think we have about six months of winter, or maybe less. It limits you as to what you can do when you're looking for food. So much of our way of life is not only physical in terms of getting out to the country to get the food, but it's also very spiritual to a lot of our people. We've done this so many years and there's certain ways to do things that indicate how spiritual it is. Even something as simple as hunting for elders is spiritual. And that when you bring food to the elders, they tell you, Deku, thank you. And then they say that you're going to get more in return. And so when you're a eight year old boy, 10 year old boy growing up, and the elder tells you that you feel like you accomplished something and you're going to get better at it. In this way, we always make sure that the elders have food all the time. Ikaw wiksikukun inyo pack for ice bridges.